Welcome to episode two of How to Become a Doctor. Uh, I got uh, Mr. Robbie Bowen, our director of free health programs, here with me. Uh, he he ran our uh, episode one. So last week he, if you missed it, go back and watch the recording. Last week he discussed what is a competitive applicant. He used a resource from our phase Moodle page, going through the different parts of our pre med wheel, the different parts that you know, you want to be strong in every area to be competitive. So if you missed that last week, definitely go back and watch it. Um, but but this week we do have uh, another exciting topic, which is your pre-med, pre-dental timeline and your test preparation, the DAT, OAT, MCAT prep. So what we're not doing today is telling you what resource to buy for the MCAT or, or the DAT, but we are going to tell you when to plan on studying, you know, how to go about preparing uh, your study schedule, your timeline. So <laughs> everything that we're using this semester as we meet, uh, we're, it's going to be from our website. We're, we're trying to point you to resources, but we're also trying to explain, you know, what these resources are, why they're so important, and then how to really uh, – read them and understand them. So, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We're trying to point you back to our website, but also help provide that guidance. So I'll remind you once again, look at our website for resources. And also you can email Robbie and I, or meet with us via Navigate. Any major can meet with us to discuss, uh, you know, medical dental school. Um, and then we can help you, you know, with preparing for it. And then if you're a science major, we can also help you with your coursework. So the, 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 the structure, if you were in here last week, the structure for this is going to be 15 minutes of a small training time and then 15 minutes of question and answers. If you, any, if you have any questions, you can post them in the chat or send them to Robbie or myself directly. And then after 15 minutes of the presenting, Robbie will read any questions we have. So I'm bringing you first to our science uh, website. You know, just this is how you get to our pre-med page. If you go to lsu.edu slash science, and then under the student services tab, you'll click pre-med pre-dental resources. That's going to bring you to our pre-med website where we are finding most of the materials we're using for today. So the one for today is going to be the timeline. And you'll find that right here in the middle of the page. And the timeline, of course, you know, this is not a graduation timeline, not telling you when to graduate. This is talking about how to think through preparing for, for medical school. So this is based on the standard application uh, process, those that would want to matriculate or begin medical school right upon graduation of a four year degree. So, you know, here you can see, you know, we're talking about someone that you come to LSU for your freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, and then that next fall you would be starting medical school. So, of course, if you're someone who plans to take a gap year, you would push everything back by, by one year. So you can see on this, this page here, we do have something for each year. You can see that the junior year uh, has the most things and the senior year has the least. And I want you guys to notice that because you can, you can, you'll always hear from Robbie and I to plan ahead, you know, work hard, because the one, one myth about applying to medical school is that you can include your senior year on your application. But that's not true if you're planning on starting right after. Because what happens is you're going to do your freshman, sophomore, and junior year, send in your application, and then, and then that senior year uh, will be for interviews and just for, you know, preparing for matriculation. So, the first thing I want to highlight on, on this timeline would be the classes you take. Now, if you're in the College of Science studying biology, you know, studying pre-professional chemistry, something like that, it's it's going to be part of your degree plan. But especially for you guys that are a psychology major, history major, economics major, you're going to want to pay special attention to these courses because not only do you want to take the prereq courses, you, you also need to think about how you can't start some courses until you have others. And on top of that, uh, there's two other things to think about. Number one is finishing the courses that are on the MCAT before you take it. And number two is trying to finish the prereqs before you apply, because you, that gives you a competitive edge since you have them completed. So you can see, you know, if you're behind, you know, just get started now. But you can see we, we recommend taking, you know, your, your first year of biology and chemistry that first, first semester. Many of you guys probably did that or are doing that. I do want to note that this is biology for science majors. We you do not want to take biology 1001 or 1005 as that as that it might work for your psychology major, but the medical schools want to see that that harder class. Chemistry 
you're not going to have the lab the first semester. You're actually going to have a two credit hour lab that second semester. These courses are very important because, as we mentioned last week, you have two GPAs. You have the regular overall cumulative GPA and the science GPA. Anything that starts with a B, C, P, M, that is biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, that's going to count toward your science GPA, even if you took it in high school as college credit or if you take it freshman year. So work very hard in these classes. You're going to want to pace yourself to make sure that you can do well in them, um, but also take enough to prepare in time. So that's the classes for freshman year. We, we say is definitely the biologies and chemistries, and then we add in sociology and psychology. These are not required for medical school, but they are on the MCAT. So we, we do recommend taking them, and, and many times they can count towards your graduation uh, degree audit as well. So th that's just the classes for freshman year. For, for sophomore year, um, you can see we we recommend you start your organic chemistry. Once again, you'll just have the organic chem class. And then the next semester, you'd have organic two with the lab. And then, um, you know, we, we do put taking statistics. That's required for the LSU New Orleans Medical School. Um, if you're a biochemistry major, they will take calculus two in its place. And once again, if you have an, another school outside of the state, you do want to just check with them. But definitely those classes and then uh, microbiology is required for those pre-dental students is definitely a helpful class for the pre-meds um, and is, you know, it's, it's required if you wanted to take some specific upper level classes to look good for medical school. So the second semester, you know, we, we do have the organic chem and then the genetics class. We, we say this is suggested, but it's almost, we could say required because to take the, the biochemistry that really is going to prepare you well, you're going to need that genetics done first. And then that, that junior year, you can see we also have you taking your, your four hours of physics in the fall, four hours in the spring. And then we suggest just taking some upper level science courses. Number one, to prepare you for medical school. Number two, because they look good for medical school. And then number three, you know, we always talk about if you're not a science major, you know, you're gonna have less BCPM classes. And so if you take more courses, then basically you'd be able to have you know, less weight on each class, your GPA, because you'll have more hours. And so one C is not going to bring your GPA down as much. So that's the classes we recommend. There are some other ones outside of that you often need, like English and things like that. But but typically, if, if you're doing a degree at LSU, you don't need to worry about the English. It's, it's usually taken care of, um, at least for uh, med, med applicants, for, for dental, you might, you might need to look into that, see if you need something else. And then, you know, for each program, definitely look at the specific specific requirements. Outside of courses, you know, we, we do talk about, you know, the MCAT and that OAT prep. You can see we don't talk about it much for the first uh, three semesters. That's because we want you to do really well in your classes and studying for your classes is studying for these exams. But you can see, you know, spring of sophomore year, we do suggest that you begin MCAT, that OAT uh, planning and review. Now, this doesn't mean you need to be studying, but it does mean, you know, read about the test, you need to know how long it is, when to take it, you know, what, what are the content sections, what are some of the common things that are um, offered out there, like is it, you know, course books or, what, you know, that kind of thing, and then you can see the summer is when we say, hey, start studying, you know, begin that studying, you know, we recommend don't cram, you don't lock yourself in a room for Christmas break and study, instead, make the habit of three to six hours, you know, on a Wednesday, Wednesday morning, you know, at 9 to 12 is going to be your MCAT that time, you know, and just let that happen over the time, over the years. Everyone's always asking, what's the secret booklet that's going to give me the good test? That's the wrong question. The real question is, how can I be studying over a long period of time so that, you know, you're not cramming and fitting this material in for a short, short amount of time, you know? But you can see, you know, we're saying, hey, sophomores, you know, definitely be looking into the test and being studying over that summer. And then, you know, you can see that fall of junior year, we encourage you to continue that review, you know, uh, identify those test dates, maybe, you know, either schedule your test or identify when you want to take it. And then the, the last thing there to focus on would be actually taking it. And we put take it by April or May if you want to use the review committee. Um, you know, we, we mentioned the review committee briefly last year, but it definitely is recommended for any applicants. So, you know, uh, we you, we'll publish that your junior year. But the whole point is you want to be taking it, you know, then and even if you're not using the review committee, that April or May test date 
is the best, you know, the best latest time to take it because you'll receive that score back one month later. So let's say you take it in April or May, you receive your score back in May or June. Well, guess what? You'll be applying to medical school that one month later. So you'd have your score ready. So, you know, we talked about the coursework here. We talked about the MCAT and just preparing well over a longer period of time, you know, and then, you know, I want to talk about the application. You can see, you know, you need to submit your, your, you know, MD, DO, you know, or, or your dental application, time for application that summer. You know, we typically recommend um, doing, you know, submitting it within the first month of it being alive, because that shows, number one, that you're really serious about the profession. And number two, it also shows, you know, it's also going to help you out because, you know, they're going to read your applications first. Most programs have rolling admissions. They're going to give you that inter interview spot first. So definitely we do recommend a, a June application, you know, if possible for dental, for, for medical school. The last thing to think about with, with your um, overall uh, timing of, of your timeline is not just coursework and MCAT and application, but actually being well-rounded, all those things that, that Mr. Bowen talked about last week. And so you can see here, we, you know, we, we recommend, you know, just some small things in the beginning, you know, maybe discussing research opportunities, you know, over your summer, getting healthcare experience. But as it goes on, we really encourage you, you know, to get involved with some student organizations, you know, um, some of th some things we have here is, you know, getting that patient contact experience. So you can see, you know, building that in across time, using your summers to gain experience so that when you come here to junior year, you're not beginning your, your research and clinical experience. You're already well-rounded and you can kind of finish off, um, you know, demonstrate leadership. Maybe you've got a leadership role at your job or that student org. And, and you know, finally that that spring, you're actually filling out all that you're part of and putting it together so that when you work on that personal statement, you can talk about what you've been involved in the last three years. Outside of that, just remember, you know, keep building good relationship with faculty because we always recommend um, getting strong letters from faculty that actually know you. So if you get an A plus in a class, but you never talk to your, your professor outside of class, they might, you know, give you a good letter, good recommendation, but it'll probably be pretty short because they don't have much to say. But if you can visit their office hours, work in a research lab, then by the time they write a letter for your junior year, then you can really have a, a personalized letter. So, you know, we mentioned that review committee uh, there, and, and we'll probably talk about it each week a little bit, but basically we have a team of pre-med advisors, Robbie and I, and eight professors who will write a, a collective letter of recommendation and review for you. And this is the, the recommended letter and the preferred letter by most medical and dental schools. So if you want that letter written by us for your application time, meaning your junior summer, that means November of your junior year. For, so for you juniors out there that are going to apply, listen up, you need to attend our info meeting that's required to get a letter from us. So uh, we, we have that in bold on here, attend our, our review committee meeting. Uh, those, those are posted on our Moodle calendar. Uh, we'll have three different meetings you can attend in November. Just got to show up at one of them. And then in the spring, you'll see we also have our deadlines for to get that letter uh, for us next year. So you'd actually register with us in February. I think it's February 25th. And then um, you would actually apply to us by the published deadlines is different for different programs, plus get that, that test score in for us. So check out our calendar. You can see all the dates on there. Definitely your juniors show up at our meeting if you're a sophomore next November, if you're a freshman, two Novembers from now. But you don't want to miss that because if you miss a deadline, we do not take any exceptions just because of the magnitude of letters we have to write. And so, you know, we have a lot of things on this timeline. I know this was a lot of information in this one session, but this really is a fly overview. And so this is not personalized to you. This is just a general timeline. So we do encourage you to meet with Mr. Bowen or I. So if you have specific questions, you know, we can talk to you about, okay, if you haven't started chemistry yet, how can you catch up on it? Or, you know, you're having trouble finding clinical experience. What are, what are some ways you can do that? Or you've already taken, you know, the MCAT before. When can you think about taking it again? So there's a lot here. I just encourage you read through this timeline, ask us questions if you have them, and then definitely, you know, I just want to leave you with this last word of advice is be fast, but don't hurry. And so, you know, be quick, be fast, you know, don't just take your time dilly dally because there's a lot of classes to take, but do not hurry. You know, don't be taking 19 hours if you're going to be getting C's. That gets you further back in your program. You definitely want to, you know, 
go as fast as you can while still keeping a very competitive edge on your your application. So that's what I have for today. I know it was a lot. I encourage you to you know watch this again or, or meet with us if you have any questions. But uh, I do want to open up the floor for questions. So, um, Mr. Bowen, do, do we have any any questions uh, that you want to read? Yes. Yeah, so um, let's start out by just talking about the timeline, some general um, things about that. Um, so if uh, in the question about taking a gap year, like if you're going to take a year before you apply, uh, you're going to graduate and then have a year off, um, is taking a, a gap year um, frowned upon or looked upon, upon by um, medical or dental schools? It's a great question. You guys are going to hear that that word a lot, gap year. It's, it's kind of a buzzword. What that means is that there will be a one-year gap between, typically between your graduation and your matriculation, your start of medical school. So, for example, you know, if, if someone were on this, this schedule here, then had freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, they'd have one more year of doing something. Could be, it's whatever, you know, coursework or working, whatever that is, and then you would start. Now, let me remind you that gap year does not go on your application. OK, if you're doing a gap year, that means your senior year will go on your application and then the gap year will become this senior year where you interview. You can still talk about what you're doing in an interview or you could update a school. But remember, it's not going to go on that app. Is it frowned upon? The question is, no, it's not generally frowned upon it because what is a gap year? It's just more data. It's more time. So if you, if you take this more time, this more data, this one year and do a bunch of amazing things, it actually will make you look better. But conversely, if you took this year and you didn't do anything and you just sat around and, you know, didn't spend your time wisely, then it would hurt you because it's more data showing that you're, you're maybe not the kind of applicant they're looking for. So, you know, you need to, you need to remember it's, it's not a better or worse thing to do a gap year. It's just more data on you. And so you need to decide, is that going to make you look better or worse? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think uh, we, you know, you'll always hear medical school uh, or admissions people saying, you know, you need to apply when you're at your best. And so, you know, if you have reasons that you need to um, take another year, maybe you want to improve your academic record and you want to have another year of good grades on your um, your academic record that you're going to uh, be submitting. Um, you know, those would be examples. Other types of reasons why people might want to take a gap year is, um, you know, personal, maybe you're getting married or, you know, things like that, and you need some extra time, you have the opportunity to do something for one year, I've been offered a chance to, you know, work in Europe for a year or something like that. So um, it's not necessarily a, a, you know, bad or a good thing. It's, you know, what are you doing? How are you spending your time? And what's your best timeline for your personal application? You know, taking another year is going to give you, you know, um, more opportunity to build a resume, then there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Um, so the other, another question in that, along that lines is, um, what if you don't do so well um, in the first uh, couple of semesters with the entry level courses? Um, you know, is it, does that mean you can't, you can't go to med school? It's a great question because many of you may maybe you're in that boat. You know, you came to school. There's a big adjustment. You know, especially with you guys with COVID. You know, you might have not done so well. So, obviously, that that is a general question. So, for some of you, for some of you out there, it would be a a, a higher mountain to climb than others. We, we always let you know. You know, the answer is never no for getting into medical school for you if you've done poorly. The question is just more how long is it going to take? What else will it take? So, you know, if you just had one semester with you know a couple bad grades. Well, maybe you could just focus, work really hard and pull up that science GPA to get to a place that you're competitive. But, you know, maybe you've done, you know, poorly for many years. And so you might consider something called a post-baccalaureate degree. So you, you might consider, you know, upon graduation, you know, doing a master's in biomedical sciences, um, you know, maybe from LSU Shreveport, there's a program there where you, you do one year of coursework to, to prove to the medical schools that, yes, even though you did do poorly uh, initially, you, you can prove to them that you can handle medical school. So definitely a case-by-case -case basis thing. Definitely encourage you to meet with us. Just keep in mind, you need to have a, a C or higher in all your prerequisites. So, you know, if there is, you know, one of those courses you didn't uh, get that grade in, you just need to re repeat that to, to show 
um, you know, that grade. But also remember, your, your latest coursework is your most important. So if you can remove yourself from that poor semester, you're showing that you've changed. Okay. So let's um, let's shift a little bit to the the admissions test, uh, the DAT, the MCAT, the the test. Um, so um, do you recommend taking some kind of like a formal uh, prep course or, you know, how do you recommend preparing for the test? It's a great question. We don't, and we don't, as I mentioned before, we don't endorse like a specific um, material, but, you know, we, we put it this way. We always say start with, you know, personal uh, study. You know, you always want to begin there, you know, because you're going to want to spend some time studying on your own, reading on your own. We recommend looking at the AAMC website. They've got a lot of resources. You know, you can read their booklet, you know, about uh, the MCAT, you know, you know, go to you know, read about the debt. And then yeah, we recommend, you know, purchasing some personal or just maybe you don't need to purchase maybe through the library or through, you know, pre-dental society, AED, you get some uh, booklets and doing some studying on your own. You do not have to take a class. You can do that if that would be beneficial to you. Oftentimes people find that it helps them with, you know, the motivation and discipline. So, you know, maybe if you're someone that you have a hard time studying on your own, you know, you, you can't seem to cut the time out yourself and you do have the money available for a class, maybe that is a good option for you. But, you know, if you're someone that, you know, you're pretty self-disciplined, you know, you can, you know, cut out the time yourself and you're a self-learner, that's definitely not required. So we've, we've seen success on both sides. You know, we recommend, you know, you, you get involved with some of the student orgs here and, and ask people what's worked for them. Um, okay, so um, I'm I'm thinking about taking the test just to kind of see what it's like, or as kind of a practice. Do you do you recommend that? Many people that might ask that they say, "Hey, look, you know, I can take the MCAT multiple times, just like the ACT. I'm just going to go, you know, blind, just sit in it, see where I'm at, and and see how I did." We do not recommend that. For two reasons: number one, they have free practice tests out there, so you can do that very thing with a practice test without paying the actual money, you know, and taking someone else's seat at the testing center. But the more important uh, point is that schools see every attempt you've taken. And even if you have a high score, if you have a low score from previously, it, it can negatively affect you. So we always say only plan to take it once. You can take it more than that than one time, but we recommend, you know, have the mindset of taking it one time and work really hard and take it when you're rest, at your best when you're ready. Um, and then after you've gotten your score back, you can make the, the assessment of whether it would be good to take it again. Um, so kind of related, um, what do you do if you don't get the score that you want on the test when you take it? That's, that's a very good question and, and very common. You know, you, you might take our advice and you, you study that six months in advance. You know, you, you might even do a, a study class and and then, you know, you go take the MCAT, you go take the DAT and you have this idea of how you'll do and you get your score back and you're, you're really disappointed. Your medical dental school journey is not over, but obviously, you know, you need to do some more studying. You, you shouldn't just, you know, go sign up for the test next month because you need to think about, okay, what are the things I did well? What, what sections were my highest? What sections were my lowest? Think about your test day. Because maybe you might've known the material, but you know you didn't implement the strategies you knew, or maybe you were just really nervous. And so you blanked, you know, well now, you know, you have the opportunity to, to take it again. So just a few things uh, is that you can take the, the, the DAT up to a total of three times. So, uh, if you do have to want to do more than that, you would have to appeal, but you can do three times. You can uh, do it, you know, there's no limit on the years, but they do need to be spaced out 90 days. The MCAT, you can take a total of seven times lifetime, um, but only three times within a year and four times within two years. Now, keep in mind, it costs money each time you take it. Every time you take it and you get a bad score, it does look poorly. So once again, if you get a bad score the first time, you don't want to set out to take it twice. You want to set out to take it one more time. So definitely think about how much time you need to study and do well. Um, prepare. Take some practice tests. Make sure your practice tests are at where you want your score to be and take it when you're ready. So th this might mean taking a gap year when you didn't plan on taking a gap year. And, and that's okay, you know, um, if you didn't plan on, on taking a gap year, but, uh, you know, you have to push back because that, that test date, um, you're just not ready for that, that's fine. But, 
um, you know, definitely take it when you're ready again um, and just think through that study plan. Yeah, and just, you know, for information, the MCAT, um, I think the current cost is like $325. I think the DAT's $415. So that's a lot of money to spend to um, just do a trial run or, you know, when you're not really prepared. So make sure that you're ready um, before you, you spend the money. Um, so these two are kind of related, like, um, um, how do you know if you need to take the test again? Like, how do you decide if you should take it or you should go with the score you have? And if you do decide to take it again, does that look bad? Is that frowned upon to take the test more than once? It's a great question. You know, how do you decide whether to take it again? Well, you know, it's definitely a, a person to person question. So you never, there's no minimums for, for med and dental school. So it's not like, you know, for certain, but if you're a, uh, a medical applicant that wants to go to allopathic MD school, you can uh, go on AMC's website and look for something called the MSAR, M-S-A-R. You do need to buy a subscription to see it. It's about $30, but uh, Robbie and I both have subscriptions. So if you want to meet with us, we can show you it. But basically, you can look at your dream school uh, or schools, and you can see the range of applicants that get admitted with those, those scores. And that will give you a good idea of, of whether you're interested in um, you know, if you're able to, you know, make it in those schools you're interested in, you know, with, with DO schools and, um, dental schools, optometry, we definitely recommend you doing a little bit on online research, but we, we would really recommend you in, you know, reach out to those individual schools, ask them, what is their average score, uh, for admit, you know, admissions, because you usually want to be around average or above if possible. And that's a very appropriate question to ask. You know, you can just, you know, email their admissions office, say, you know, let them know what, what your ball pick park is you're shooting for. And then of course you can meet with us uh, to help make that decision. Now it is always a risk to take another test because you can, your score could go down. So if you're kind of borderline, think about, could you do better? Um, and if, if you can't, you know, don't, don't take it again, but if you, if you can do better, just know a lot of times they take your last score. So definitely be prepared. Yeah, and, and general information is usually on the admissions website, just, you know, they're not going to give specifics like, you know, yes, you're fine, no, you're not, but they'll provide, you know, information about our, our average MCAT score of the entering class, and just general information like that, that you can sort of compare um, yourself to. And I think, you know, the other thing is like, you know, thinking about the test, you know, did you, were there distractions going on that day? I didn't feel well, you know, there was just, you know, I was distracted because of stuff going on in the room, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, situations like that, where you just feel like, you know, I, I was much better than this. Or I feel like I can do much better than that. You know, you can certainly take that into consideration. Um, and, you know, there's no right or wrong, you know, um, I certainly, if you're going to retest, I would certainly focus on the areas that you didn't do as well in on the first time and, you know, trying to, you know, find out what areas did I struggle in and then let me, you know, let me improve on that area. So, um, okay, so that's all the questions that um, we have. We're almost out of time, so. Yeah, well, well you know, we definitely appreciate you guys showing up or, um, or watching this recording. Um, you know, once again, we do want to remind you, this is a very general timeline. So do not be very worried or concerned if, if you're one course off or something like that. Um, because, you know, I mean, there is summer school to catch up. You know, there is a little bit of leeway in, in this, in some of these things like the coursework when you're taking them, that kind of thing. But once again, you know, don't get too, don't, don't get too worried about this, this sort of checklist mindset. Just do your best to, you know, prepare in advance, work hard, and be the best version of yourself. So um, once again, thank you for coming out. We'll post this recording. And yeah, let me you know, um, let me encourage you guys to um, check out our calendar of events. Um, we have a lot of things coming up. We're recording this on the 29th, but um, next week is our pre-health uh, health professions information fair in the union on October 5th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So we have a calendar of events in our Moodle phase, our pre-health advising um Moodle group. So just check that out. There's lots of uh, webinars from different medical schools and different associations. Um, so make sure that you're sort of checking that calendar um, frequently so that you don't miss out on opportunities to uh, learn or, you know, participate in things that are going on. So. Awesome. Well, well thank you again. And you guys have a great day.
Bye.